Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. On the Smart Bus with Macomb Seniors as Smart Macomb County and Richmond Lennox EMS helps these seniors get their first vaccine dose. The battle is heating up to get students back into face-to-face -face learning, but the question is identifying who is the enemy everyone is fighting. A life sentence is thrown out and a Detroit man is free tonight after new information comes to light in a murder case that goes back to more than 15 years ago. Well, let's start things off at six here with Storm Tracker 4 showing our next round of winter weather. Thankfully, this one won't be a direct hit. Flakes uh, falling in many parts of Metro Detroit right now, but not much accumulation. Let's start things off at six here with Ben. Yeah, guys, it's been light. In fact, most of the day we haven't really seen any, uh, but it's all picked up here within the last hour or two. Some places a little more than others. Storm Tracker 4, a little tough to tell, but it's the west zone that seems to be getting more of the uh, more moderate snow right now. Stuff's a little bit lighter there as you work your way to the east side, but we anticipate that this is going to be around probably for the next uh, few hours. I'd say by about 9 o'clock tonight, we'll see the widespread snow at least taper down. There will be some lake effect stuff tonight, mostly after midnight and mainly in the north zone. But total accumulations for most of us should be around an inch and probably on the lower side of that. If you get above an inch, that's likely going to be in the north zone from the addition of those lake effect snow showers as we get through the overnight hours tonight. And of course, the weekend just around the corner, we start dry on Saturday at 25. And look at that high temperatures hitting 30 on Sunday. But the snow comes back. There's rain in the forecast and at least two 40 degree days. We'll look at all of it for you coming up. If you want a sneak peek, you know where to find it. Local forecasters app has your 10 day forecast and you can track all that snow coming in tonight. It's free in your app store by searching WDIV guys. All right, Ben, now to the latest on the coronavirus and the newest numbers in from Michigan. The state reports 888 new cases in the last 24 hours. They also report an additional 85 deaths, with most of them coming from a review of records. President Joe Biden will tour Pfizer's Portage plant in West Michigan tomorrow. His visit was supposed to take place today, but was postponed because of the weather. And on the vaccine front, Pfizer says it will begin clinical trials for pregnant women. It will involve 4,000 women in nine countries, including the U.S. Turning now to an important vaccination effort underway in Macomb County. We first showed you yesterday how smart buses are being used to reach seniors and get them the shot. Macomb County issues a thousand doses each week to Richmond Lennox EMS and smart agreed to call seniors they already serve to provide transportation. Sean Lay had a chance to be on one of those buses and shows us why it's a ride the passengers won't soon forget. Sean. The truth. The truth. Let's get to the truth right now, which is we're on a smart bus with a group of Macomb County seniors that are just lovely who would probably be at home right now trying to get through websites or on hold, trying to get an appointment for a COVID-19 vaccine. Instead, they're on this bus and they just got their first shot. Come along on the ride with us. Sandy Hopkins is in tears. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it. Sandy is a Macomb senior, a double amputee. She has been trying for weeks to get a COVID vaccine appointment. I've tried and I've not been able to get anywhere near one. The entire experience scared her to death. That means I would never get to see my grandkids. But then on Sunday, out of the blue, Smart Bus called her, asked her if she wanted the shot. How'd that make you feel? Great. Like you're important. Somebody cares. Somebody cares. Willie Gady got the same call. He's 66, visually impaired. When Smart and Macomb County called him, he said, finally, leaders were finding ways to get seniors shots. I mean, you could sit and wait forever for somebody for somebody to do something, and that, that doesn't get you anywhere. All the way up the 32-mile road. Pull in and get a shot of protection. Five minutes? Yeah. Four minutes? Just like that. Easy. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now you've got one shot in your arms. You're closer to your family. Yes. Yes. Closer to hugging my grandkids. Well, you're one step closer to being with them. Being, I'll be with them. Yep. What's that going to be like? Evan. Round trip service. I'll be watching for you this afternoon. Well, you'll be on. Soon Willie was back home in Shelby Township with his wife with the first layer of COVID protection that he's been waiting for. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Guys, so far, what do you think? Well, I couldn't have been easier. No, it sure could not have been. 
and you wonder if there's more doses the state can get, why not do this all over the place? Exactly. All right, we're on the Smart Bus with the seniors, Sean Light, Local 4 Defenders. All right, Sean. Well, teachers feeling pressure to return to the classroom without being fully vaccinated want parents and administrators to step back for a moment and push pause. They want everyone to know that they are not the enemy. The virus is. Paula Tutman takes a look at a new battle line being drawn as various school districts try to get children back to face to face learning environments. Without question, the battle is really brewing and heating up when it comes to getting children back into face to face learning. Angry social media posts from parents after declaring a snow day this week and rising temperatures in Ann Arbor. This is the latest district to grapple with the face to face learning question. The Ann Arbor Public School District, with its 18,000 students, has been 100% remote since last March. I didn't, uh, you know, start teaching 25 years ago to teach from my living room with my dog behind me. Uh, you know, I, I want to be in a classroom, and I think, I wish, uh, you know, the community really understood that all of us want to be back in the classroom. And teachers are concerned about not being pushed far enough in front of the line to get fully vaccinated. Like Mark Soboleski, who teaches middle school history. He lives in Oakland County, but works in Ann Arbor. He is actually now fully vaccinated and he is disheartened by the sheer incivility from some parents. There's a certain attitude out there that has kind of been portrayed like my kids have been on a snow day since last March. And, you know, I think that is incredibly dismissive of what not only we as, uh, you know, teachers and administrators and central office administrators have been working on for the last year. During the recent K-12 Alliance Michigan meeting, the threat of declining mental health of students, teachers and parents is now also rising to the top of the concern list, along with COVID concerns. It, to me, it's the underrated part of this, uh, uh, the whole pandemic. Shots in arm, Mark feels like he can safely return to a face-to-face -face setting, even if it's just a supervised learning center. I personally can't wait. Like, are you kidding me? That's a dream. To be able to teach in a classroom with children is going to be, I don't know a single teacher who doesn't want that. But last night, the board voted to bring some students back to face-to-face -face learning if it is identified that their family situation cannot accommodate remote learning any longer, while keeping as many students as possible as remote. And as you may have guessed, not everyone is pleased about the decision. Paula Tutman, Local 4. All right, Paula, a group of restaurants, meanwhile, taking the state of Michigan to court over their losses during the pandemic shutdowns. The Macomb County Restaurant Bar and Banquet Association has filed a lawsuit alleging huge losses due to the state's COVID-19 orders. They want compensation for businesses' expenses and lost profits. We spoke with a bowling alley owner today who says compensation would help get his business back on its feet. If we get compensation, That'll help many that, that have had things worse than others. But if we can't open, we're done. We reached out to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services about the lawsuit. They declined comment. A happy reunion outside the Michigan Reformatory Prison in Ionia this afternoon. A Detroit man convicted in 2005 for double murder and arson walked away a free man after a judge overturned his conviction. This afternoon, he spoke with Local 4's Rod Maloney. And Rod, this man has been proclaiming his innocence the entire time, and someone was listening. Yes, and in fact, it was the Cooley Innocence Project. They now claim 28 convictions overturned. They're quite proud of that fact. And it's a situation where this case dates back to a DPD investigation 15 years ago. Tonight, Kenneth Nixon is a free man. It was surreal, but once that we pushed that door open and I saw those cars in the parking lot, just pure joy. Moments before, Kenneth Nixon's Zoom court hearing had the Innocence Project saying, The integrity of Mr. Nixon's conviction has been undermined. Back in May of 2005, this house fire on Detroit's Charleston Street took the lives of 10-year-old Raylon McCauley and his 18-month-old sister, Tamaya Vaughn. A Molotov cocktail thrown into the home with a family of six inside at the time.
Back then, Detroit police arrested 19-year-old Kenneth and his girlfriend Latoya Colford. I was arrested and taken downtown. I had no idea that the crime had even occurred. A jury acquitted her. Kenneth received life without possibility of parole. But the Innocence Project found the original ID from a 13-year-old boy and then a jailhouse informant were not reliable, overturning the conviction. The dead children's mother, Naomi Vaughn, did not agree. Do not let him go. If anything, if anything it should, anything, be, a it should be a retrial. This is so unfair. Nixon says he understands Naomi Vaughn's anger, but he's ready now to move on with his life. Says he earned his GED, spent years in the law library, which led to this scene outside the prison today. Tears of joy, happy smiles around, and a new sense of purpose. You know, I want to I want to get involved in the innocence movement in, in some capacity. I want to be able to help other guys and give back to the organizations that helped me, to the people that, you know, were there for me. I want to be able to help them, you know, reach back for, you know, the next guys that, that are fighting for their freedom as well. Now, Nixon told me that he is headed home. He was driving to his mother's home in Detroit. He says there she is cooking foods that he has not tasted in many years, and he's looking forward to that and the party and the excitement of his first night away from prison. Back to you. I'm sure he is. Why did he say anything about his future plans besides after, you know, he gets a full belly and that sort of thing? Well, one of the things he did say is that all that time in the law library gave him a thought that perhaps he might go to law school, mm -hmm. something he'll be looking at in the years ahead. Yeah, okay. Rod, we appreciate it. A Detroit family looking for answers tonight after their home catches fire. Happened on Edmore Street near 8 Mile and Kelly Roads on the city's east side. Neighbors said they heard a loud boom and saw someone walking away from the home. When the family uh, made it uh, to, out of the home, the house was on fire. Three teenagers, three adults lived in the home. The homeowner says it's a total loss. Everything in my house gone. All my memories I had to the house is my kids. My last two kids was born. They 17. And they 16. I had this house 18 years, 18 long years, all my life in the house. Everything is in the house. Fire investigators still trying to figure out what started the fire. The family is trying to set up a GoFundMe account now. Michigan's distracted driving laws could soon be getting an overhaul. We'll show you what's on the table coming up. Also stranded in snow and some of the coldest temperatures of the year and no cell service. One Michigan woman was running out of time until her call for help was finally heard. We've got the story of a remarkable rescue coming up next.